According to the International Organization for Standardization, Monday is the first day of the week. The name Monday is derived from Old English literally meaning Moon's Day. Monday is dedicated to the moon. The name Tuesday derives from the Old English Tuesday, which literally means Tuesday. Tu is the Old English form of the Norse god Tyr, the god of war and law. Tuesday is dedicated to Tyr, Tyr's day. The third day of the week is Wednesday, continued from the Middle English Wednesday, which is itself derived from the Old English Woden's day. Woden was a Germanic god similar to the Norse god Odin. Eventually, Woden would become the head of the Germanic pantheon. Wednesday is Woden's day. Thursday is the contemporary name for the fourth day of the week, which derives from the Old English that is translated as Thunor's day. In Norse mythology, Thunar is known as Thor, the god of thunder. Thursday is dedicated to Thor, known as Thor's Day. The name Friday comes from an Old English word, which means Day of Frigg, a major goddess in Norse paganism. Frigg, also called Freya, was associated with love and is equivocated with the Roman goddess of love, Venus. As a consequence, in cultures associated with the Roman and Norse pantheons, Friday is considered the day of love and love making. In parting with the previous traditions, the sixth day of the week, Saturday, is named directly after the Roman god Saturn. Latin name for Saturday is Dies Saturni. Saturday, obviously, is Saturn's day. Sunday, the seventh day of the week, is derived from the Old English Sunnendig, literally translated as Sun's Day, which itself is from the Germanic interpretation of the Latin Dies Solis, Day of the Sun. Before we get to the names of the months explained, we must understand an important aspect of the ancient Roman calendar, and as a consequence, the calendar we use. Originally, there were only 10 months in the year, starting with March and ending on December. The period between December and March was considered a monthless period. Following the death of Romulus, the mythical founder of the Roman Kingdom, his successor added January and February. This will play out in the last four months of the year. Also, the English names for the months of the year are all based on Latin or Greek names and words. In ancient Roman mythology, Janus is the god of beginnings, endings, and transitions, hence also of gates, doorways, and time. A two-faced god that looks to both the past and the future, the Romans dedicated and named the month of January to Janus. This month's birthstone is garnet and flower is the snowdrop. The English name February comes directly from the ancient Roman month Februarius which itself is named for Februa, a Roman festival of ritual purification which occurred on the 13th through the 15th of the month. The festival would have been similar to modern spring cleaning. A later Roman god, Februus, would be named after and personify both the month and the festival. The birthstone of February is the amethyst and the flower is the primrose. As already stated, 
The earliest Roman calendars began with the month, which in modern English is March. In Latin, the month was called Martius, after the god of war, Mars. The English version, March, also has meaning. As March was the first month of spring, it was the logical time to begin or resume military campaigns. So it could be said that the month of March is a good time to go on the march. This month's birthstone is aquamarine and the flower is the daffodil. Okay, now for April. First, how the name is derived is uncertain, although there are two feasible explanations. The traditional origin for April is from the Latin aperire, which means to open. In the Mediterranean climate of the Roman civilization, April was the month during which many varieties of flowers bloom or open, hence the word aperire. The second possibility is that it is connected through the Roman goddess Venus the goddess of love, sex, and fertility, which would neatly coincide with the natural world's rebirth around this time. The connection linguistically is through Venus's e Greek equivalent, who is Aphrodite, and we can see some similarity between April and Aphrodite. This month's birthstone is diamond, and the flower is the daisy. The Roman goddess of fertility, Bona Dea, was celebrated in what today in English is May. The Greek equivalent to Bona Dea was Maya, who was the goddess of motherhood and growth. The word Maya meant midwife in Greek, while in ancient Rome, the festival dedicated to Bona Dea was held in May. An alternate explanation provided by Ovid, an important Roman poet, claims May was named after Maoris, Latin for elders, and that the following month, June, is named for the Iuniores, Latin for juniors. So May is named for either the Greek and Roman goddess Maya, or for those considered to be elders. May's birthstone is the emerald, and the flower is the lily of the valley. There are two possible explanations for the source of the name for the month of June. First it could be that June is named for the Latin word for junior, which is Iuniores. The other possibility is that June is named after the Roman goddess Juno, the wife of Jupiter and the equivalent to the Greek goddess Hera. June's birth stone is the pearl, and the flower is the rose. The month of July is named after and honors Julius Caesar, who was born in July. Originally, the month was called Quintilis in Latin, since it was the fifth month of the older Roman calendar before January and February were added. Emperor Augustus changed the name of the month during his reign between 27 BCE and 14 of the Common Era. The birthstone of July is the ruby, and the flower is the larkspur. August was originally named Sextilis in Latin because it was the sixth month of the original ten-month Roman calendar. The first Roman emperor, Augustus, renamed the month to honor himself. He also chose this month because it was during this time when a series of major victories took place including the conquest of Egypt. The birthstone for the month of August is onyx, and the flower is the poppy. September, October, November, and December are the easiest to explain. Once again, we must recall that the first Roman calendar had 10 months, and this is reflected in how we today name the last four months of the year. Septua was Latin for seven. Octo is Latin for eight. Nona is Latin for nine. And Deci is Latin for ten, which is where we also derive the word decimal. September was the seventh month of the original Roman calendar. 
October the 8th, November the 9th, and December the 10th. September's birthstone is the sapphire, and the flower is the morning glory. October's birthstone is the opal, and the flower is the calendula. November's birthstone is the topaz, and the flower is the chrysanthemum. December's birthstone is the blue turquoise, and the flower is the holly. Hopefully this has all made sense, and you have learned a little something about how we have derived the names of the days of the week, and the months of the year. And I'll close by saying there is nothing whatsoever in astrology, so please give it up. Thank you. And now for the credits.